Today we're going to play Mono Blue, and don't get me wrong, I'll still sublime Epiphany people, but today... <laughs> today we play Sphinxes, commanded by Unesh, Cryosphinx Sovereign. This commander is absurd, it reduces the cost of our Sphinxes by 2 mana, and then it also triggers an ETB, or an ETB of any other Sphinx, and basically gives us a 4 cards factor fiction. The rest of the deck is counter magic to not die, and all the Sphinxes available to make the tribe work. That's it, that's the deal, go to the game. What is up? We play historic, historic, bro. What is up? We play historic, historic, bro. All right, we are back. And today we're playing Mono Blue Onesh, 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 Sphinx. Wow. Talk about a original, tribal, super fun build for mono blue. I thought we were playing all the other colors, all the other monocolors, and I was missing something with blue. And then I saw this list, this Anesh list, and I said, you know what? That is perfect, because Anesh is bonkers. It's really, really, really something else. Every time you play Anesh, you gain so much card advantage that it feels like you're playing a whole different game. And it looks like my IV opponent doesn't care if we're playing Anesh, if we're playing um, Golos, if we're playing Joda, they don't care. They are doing their thing and they are running over us. Our hand was quite slow. We can just play Palladium Mirror and hope that we can cast Anesh and Maybe they don't have too much action, but I doubt it. So the idea of Anish, oh, oh, of course it's a tribal deck for Sphinxes, and Anish has uh, so many payoffs for Sphinx Sphinxes, it reduces the cost by two, it makes us so we can... Kind of like Factor Fiction, is it that card? Well, we opponent separates the four top, of our, uh, top cards of our deck in two piles, and we choose one and put it in our hand. The rest goes to the library. And that happens for every Sphinx we play. So you'll see now. Opponent will now be presented with the four cards. The four top cards of our library. And we will choose one. And I mean with so many lands. I guess I just pick a Sphinx. But we are getting run over by an Ivy, a Drake, a Sage and a Dream Shackle Geist. But this happens. We were on the we were on the draw against a deck that is really really fast in Ivy. You need to deal with Ivy quick, and we don't have that interaction right now. Maybe I should have mold this hand, but Sphinx is this is a slow slow deck with a very heavy top end. Are they going to kill us right now? All right, we might be already dead. Opponent converts both creatures into five fives. Symmetry Sage gets a, gets into a three three. So we're taking 16. We are almost dead. Yeah, this happens when you play versus Ivy. What can we do? Yeah. I was saying Anesh is really, really top end heavy, so you want to deploy your resources really fast. We will go to the next one. Opponent clearly has this game. We are back for more Anesh Sphinxes in mono blue playing versus Mara Nauer. What a stupid, awesome deck. Okay, okay, we are going first. That's that's great, but I'm really worried that this hand does not deal with Mara Nauer, nor anything that they will be doing. So I'm all. Jesus, wow. Yeah, this is an expensive deck. The original list that I saw, I will... I have put the owner in the description. Even was playing 36 lands. I really don't like playing 36 lands in my historic ball decks. I never go down from 39. And for these top, heavy top end decks, like 40 has to be the number. Even with MDFCs. Kefnet's Monument is great versus Rat Colony because if we can keep playing creatures from the top from from our hand, 
we can maintain a couple of red colonies tapped. Okay, opponent will without seas, so probably they take Thrix. It makes sense. Because we can play Unish and then... What do we... Ooh, alright, so this accelerates that process even more. Because we play Palladium Mirror, we tap the Rat Colony for the, for the next turn, and then we have so much mana to work the following turn. And we keep them under some control. I think they're missing... Yeah, they're clearly missing land drops, which is really working in our favor. We take two. Another... Well, that's a shape shifter. That's another Sphinx. So this will be even less mana cost. And we play Anish. Opponent, would you like to separate these cards into two piles? So I can put one of those piles into my hand. And could you do that quickly? Because I'm recording content and people don't like to stare at the screen. I'm so, I will take this moment to say I'm so happy we're, with where we, are, where we are going with this channel. We have recently surpassed 400 subscribers. And I can't wait for 500. Because at 500 I unblock... Unlock? Unblock. Blocking. I unlock the community feature from YouTube, so I will be able to post and be even more active in your YouTube life. And we will do very fun stuff when that happens. I want to start doing giveaways. I want to start engaging with you guys much more. And right now, YouTube does not allow me because he, he says, hey, you're a small channel. You have just 400 subscribers. People don't want to talk to you. That's a little bit unfair if you ask me, but hey, you have to work up and earn stuff here. But we're doing it. An opponent doesn't like to hear me talk and says, you know what, I'm going to play another game. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue to play with Unesh Sphinxes in Mono Blue, playing versus Older Ravengard Boros. This is the, the one that gives double team. To the creatures, all right, this hand looks nice if we find more lands. So yeah, guys, we are growing and we are, gr we are growing at a very fast speed. And I couldn't be happier. I love you all. You're so great. And hope you're enjoying and noti noticing the improvements that we're doing to this channel. We're not stopping. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping ever. Ever, ever, ever. This is too much fun for me. And I'm going to bring the best historic brawl content. Not historic brawl, but I'm just doing magic. Counter this. I'm just doing magic. I don't care. I'm not competing against an other other historic brawl players. I'm just I just want to make the best magic content possible. So I look up to the big guys, the big boys doing the big the big channels. And I want to learn from them, but I also want to do, want to do better stuff. More creative stuff, more enter, more entertainment stuff. Kefnet's Monument is amazing in this deck. Because in blue, this normally you don't, you're not running so many creatures, so Kefnet's Monument is kind of meh. But in Sphinxes, wow, it's so good. The discount is already good, but the tapping thing... And you know what? Versus aggro like this, opponent is playing the older Ravengard, and we can make sure that we soak up some damage by keeping some of their creatures tapped. So I'm happy I'm playing Anish, because there are some interactions that take time, like the Anish trigger ability, and it allows me to speak a little bit in my mind. I'm always speaking gameplay and tactics, I never tell you guys how I'm feeling, how I feel, where we're going, and you are... You have the right to know that, because you engage with this content and you put your time, you invest your time in this. And I want you to know that this is, this is never stopping. And we're going to do some great stuff. All right. Opponent gives double team to the Hunter Crop Captain. So now the Captain attacks and they make a copy into their hand. 
Yeah, alchemy shenanigans. But we have a ambush in Thrix, so we can eat something. Let's tap the captain and eat the intimidator that can pump other creatures. So we eat, and in the process, we reduce the cost of our creatures. So, Onish can be really good here, but we are dependent on them finding us a land, because we have to keep making land, land drops, and I think that there's no way we can miss a land from this trigger. Yeah, like, they can put... They can put a Ferrari on one of the piles. I will still pick up the land. Can you imagine? Like, hey, here you have a Ferrari and you have an island. Well, I'm going to just pick the island because for content, I need to win. Remind you that we have the untap.gg stats in the description of the videos. So you can go check that up and see What's the actual win rate of the decks that I play before you decide to invest your wild cards? I normally show good games, games that I win, but I also games that I lose. And I believe and I think that they are good games to show. I won't ever show games where our opponent is mana screwed and they die when I'm mana screwed and I die. And basically I like to show magic games. The Raven Guard. All right, so they can play another captain because they duplicated that from the double team from before. I really like our position because take a look at our Sphinxes. They are so cheap, so cheap. Oh, Angel Fire Ignition. We are taking a bunch here because I'm not going to block. Ooh. All right, so we are going down to six. I'm not blocking here. Because I think that next turn with the discount from Anish and Thrix and the Kefnet's monuments, like we're we have built our own omni omniscience, basically. <laughs> we have so much discount. This deck should be called like a sale second. I'm trying to do a funny joke about discounts and I cannot think about that. It's it's already difficult to be speaking in English all the time, so you guys can understand me. Alright, so we're just going to play some Sphinxes. Where do we start? This one draws us cards. And we can now tap down their commander. Wow, we're going to draw so many cards. I love this deck. I love this deck. I think we are playing also very, very good decks. Very... And different flavors of decks. So I hope that you're finding videos that are suited to your like, but also that you are learning new stuff. We have so many cards, and now we have to discard, and I guess, I don't know what, what we can get rid of. Flood of Tears I could drop, I'm never going to bounce this board, but I guess Glass Pool Mimic also doesn't make too much sense, because we can play so many other things. And we have the Dream Eater, so I'm just going to attack them, no fear whatsoever, and I'm going to wait for their move with a Dream Eater with a Flash and a Fading Hope. I feel so safe with the cards that we have in hand that I can even get rid of Atemsis. I'm so sorry, Atemsis. I guess I should have to get rid of the Hedron Archive. I'm not planning on casting that either. So many cards in hand, I forgot to look to the left of the screen. I don't see how Boros can overcome this. I don't see it. Today's video should have footage of new footage of my cat that was able to record the other day. So funny. He's so he's such a crazy cat. I love him. All right. Oh, I can speak so much in this game. Uh, 
The Valorous stands. I guess they should be killing the Punish. Well, they know about the Dream Eater, so we're going to tap. We're going to tap the Marshal again. Because now we plan on bouncing one of the captains. And I guess we trade with the other. I really don't need the Dream Eater, the Dream Eater in the battlefield. Wow, we draw so many cards. Opponents will probably concede to all the work that we are putting him through. Like, he's working more than we are working right now with our deck. Can you imagine this in Commander? Have you played versus Anesh in Commander? Is it so annoying? But Sphinxes, Sphinxes are so, so, so unique. They should be really, really popular. I mean, what a, what a cool tribe. All right, so we bounce the bigger captain. Not that it makes too much of a difference because we are nevertheless trading with Dream Eater. And yeah. We have the pressure on the air. I mean, I'm saying we are going to block against using Fading Hope. That's that's the, the play that I'm that I'm thinking of. That's the other alternative. But I feel like Fading Hope in our hand is a much safer is a much safer play than just bouncing that captain. Because now we attack for eight. And any Sphinx that we play makes their Marshal not on top. And we can add layer of protection playing Kira. So let's just do that. Because now this counters the very first spell that, tri that targets one of our creatures. And we are never losing again. You see, we have the... Ward, semi-ward. And they will bounce that to their hand. Be my guest opponent, you can have your commander back to your hand as many times as you want. That won't affect the result of this game. Doomscore, you know I have the neutralizing hand. You truly know that, so... Yeah, we will use that. Opponent gives us a GG, good game, good game. Here we are back for more. Anesh. Cryo Sphinx Sovereign versus Maria. Ooh, Maria. This is a hard one because they are a super explosive deck that is trying to play all the small artifacts and then cast Maria and use her ability to make mana with them. Or to generate card advantage by tapping two artifacts. So I like having Fading Hope. That can control Maria for one turn, but we need to find something else. We need to find a counter spell basically to counter Maria on her first way down. You see that now they deployed one artifact, probably now two more. Renewal, Fountain of Renewal, and what else? Yep, Manifold Key. We don't find the... We don't find the counter. Maybe we can bluff a counter with a Foretold Behold. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, I don't think they're going to fall for that. Bronze Sword. All right. All right, are they miss? Wow, they are missing their third land drop, so we are getting lucky right now. Okay, all right, that's the opening we need. Um, all right, opponent with the Voltaic Servant. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. They have deployed all their hand, most of their hand. But they are missing one land drop, so we scry with Behold 
I don't think we need the land. And Dream Eater is another way in which we can bounce Miria. So I'm going to keep it. We can also cycle the Lonely Sandbar. Ah, yes, that's what we need. That's what we need, because Palladium Mirror can really accelerate our mana to the point that we can Unish and start finding our best spells. Opponent. Yeah, they have... Can they tap? Oh, no. That's to untap. So they cannot mess with us. They can... They can activate that either. All right. So we got really, really lucky with with this draw. I mean, that's what they happen. What it happens normally to Maria, because they run so little l amounts of lands and so much, so many artifacts that this is more. This is less of an accident than. A typical situation for them. Because they find the third land and they go off. Really, because they... Imagine they find the third land, play Maria, they automatically have six more mana. So it's like they are missing land drops, but clearly that's not affecting their... Well, it's actually... It's really affecting them, but it's... There's a third land, it's tapped, but it's not like they cannot win ever again. All right, they keep... Yeah, they, they're targeting that. They don't have anything better to do. And I'm just going to play this tree meter because guess we can bounce their creature and start pressuring them. Wash away is perfect. Well, we're going to win this one, I guess. Because wash away is a safety valve versus the first Maria, and then we have Fading Hope and Real Master Sphinx. We can just go off. Go off. There's no there's no point in this in this game anymore. Alright, we have so much mana. We can attack for four in the air. This this egg is really really fun. It's slow and but it's really fun i'm not going to tap like this i'm just going to tap palladium mirror so let's undo 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 no what what am i doing okay there we go tap 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 play an ash This resolves. Now opponent will separate the four top cards into two piles. This is bonkers. This is such a good commander. They are deciding, trying to see what they do. Oh, I'm also I'm thinking about doing. Ooh, what do we pull, what do we get? Yeah, let's get the opt that we can cast it during their turn and thinking about doing some sort of contest for giving away i have so many a couple of years ago fun fact a couple of years ago during the covid pandemic i invested some in some magic boxes and i have so many of them not like rudy level but i have like Probably 20 boxes of magic cards sealed. Maybe not 20, maybe somewhere around 15. And let's counter Mary and we, we win here. And I'm thinking about opening some of them and starting doing giveaways. I've already done that and sent three times Spiral Remaster booster box, booster uh, boosters to three subscribers. We win. We were playing. So yeah, I'm trying to find ways in which uh, I could create some sort of contest for for you to also enjoy the content better, engage with it more. Maybe that that would be my only goal. I'm not going to say, "Hey, uh, subscribe and you will win this." Um, 
I'm just happy making in more engaging content for you. And if I can spice it up with some prizes, that would be great. Because I have so many magic cards in my house that I wouldn't mind starting giving them away, some of them. <laughs> like I have like 16 to 20, no, 16 probably commander decks. And But the thing that I cherish the most is my cube. I have a, some sort of legacy, vintage legacy cube. And that's the thing that where I'm actually buying things for the cube. I'm not making any paper decks anymore. I'm just trying to make my cube better. My cube is in Cube Cobra. So if some of you are cube fans or limited fans or fans of magic in general, and you want to see my cube, you can ask me for that. I will give you the link. And it's so good. It's so much fun. Sometimes I draft it with my friends but I just like having it. It's a 520, uh, 510 cards cube. I love this deck. This deck allows me to talk and you probably can see what we are doing here. We are playing our lands, we are playing versus Doving and I guess I'm not going to do anything because they are holding up mana. So we don't do anything. We have our own counter spells. That's the beauty of this mono blue deck. You can play it as a control deck for the first turns until the Sphinxes are ready. Thassa, does that do anything? I mean, I'm just going to be mana efficient and counter nevertheless, but I don't know why they are playing Thassa, but that's a scary card. And we can now accelerate our mana with Palladium. Palladium Mirror in this video has been like an MVP. MVP. Every time we have played, it feels like we are just taking an extra turn the two mana acceleration is too much Karn living legacy what the hell is this list from the opponent Thassa, Karn, Dovin what are we playing against I'm so tempted at leaving, letting that resolve but I don't know what they are doing so I will take some extra precautions alright and now we can start refueling our hand with Unesh I love you, Onesh. You provide so much value. Even if they do something to Onesh, like kill it, exile it, bounce it, the the value is already here. It's a crazy, crazy... And, and they take some time. Oh, they don't want us to have the spark double. Never mind. I need the lands. Psych. Joke's on you, opponent. I needed all the lands. So let me know if you are all in for some contests. It would be some easy stuff, you know. I also would like to play some games versus you. Versus any of you that would like to play, but I'm really holding... What? Oh, oh I'm an idiot. Wow, I messed up. <laughs> Opponent copied the Anish and... That's the first time that I see the interface for Onesh and I was I didn't separate the cards. So I just gifted them four cards. Wow. That's that's what happens when you are super distracted. All right, we will have to fight against our stupidity. My stupidity. Why would I why would I charge you with that one? So I was talking also about the possibility to do in some streams in the future and do some live content. But well, I'm just waiting. I don't want to rush into doing so many things. And I think I need a critical mass to start doing those things. All right, so we play the Riddle Master Sphinx and we are going to bounce this Anesh because I feel like we are supposed to combat this card differently. I mean, also leaving the Anish, their Anish there shouldn't be so problematic because they don't run Sphinxes, of course. But it looks like they have so many clones, so they can very well play more clones, clone my Sphinx, 
my sphinxes and just go off with sphinxes. I don't want to die to sphinxes while playing sphinxes. That would be the ultimate disrespect. So we, what we can do is we can play Replicating Ring. This holds up at least three mana, which we can use to pay for Swan Song and Fading Hope. They have a reverse rebuke and they've had it for a couple of turns and I've been sitting on the Swan Song ever since. Of course they know it, so they cannot fire it up. Metamorph. I hate that Metamorph doesn't target, so I cannot actually Fading Hope before they target. They copy the Riddles Master Sphinx, so they bounce our Anish to our hand. We don't care too much about that, because casting Anish for us is really good. Spark Double, alright. Well, this is getting more complicated right now. I mean, all of these Sphinxes are great with ETB triggers for us. Let's hope that we can counter counterattack them with what we have. I think that I... No, I'm not supposed to use this. I'm not supposed to use this, because those are those clones can keep coming and keep coming. All right. But every turn we're playing more mana, so every turn we can do more and more stuff. And we will begin by Anish, because this will give us more action, but also will discount the cost of our Sphinxes. Ooh, there's a Gefnet Monument. Should we pick that? Let's see what the opponent offers us in the piles. Ah, I really think I'm supposed to take Brazen Borrower here. Because Brazen Borrower is another way to tempo them. And they are at 17. Because we deploy a couple of Sphinxes and then we tempo them. Oh, this also will draw us cards again. Wow, Unish is broken. We choose Sphinxes, and we do this again. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, this is great. Uh, Thassa's Oracle versus everything else? Thassa's Oracle. I mean, I guess there's a world where we where you mill out with this deck, and Thassa's Oracle is another win gun? That is a crazy line right there. But we will let this go, still holding up our counters and our bounce spells. An opponent is kind, kind of frozen right now. They have good creatures. 11 power in the air. And a whole breaker horror. Well, that's interesting. We can deal with that, but... Do they have a one mana spell that they can use? All right, let's put them to the test. I will Brazen Borrower attempt at bouncing one of the Sphinxes, the bigger one. And see what's their answer. Cloud Shift. All right, so they had something. Returns the the Unish and we can let that go. I really don't mind <laughs> casting Unish time and time again. So we bounce Unish to our hand, but now we fizzle the Cloud Shift by bouncing the Sphinx, which is a Spark Double. Yeah. And see what we draw here. All right, I guess we have to punish one more time. We should find something to deal with Holebreaker. Memory Lapse, a couple of islands. Oh, we still have the Riddle Master Sphinx. So what we can do is we can play the Sphinx and wait with Memory Lapse in hand. Yeah, because we have six mana right now. We can... Yeah, we need the two blue. We have two mana for the memory lapse. So we bounce Hold Breaker Horror, grow our creature, and draw again from Unish. This is so dirty. Wow. Like Unish has. 
it it does so much for this deck. Lofty denial, two islands, and I'm. Well, that separation of cards was quite kind of questionable. Like, what else I'm going to take? And we get them for four, and just hold up memory lapse. Let's hope that they can also counter our counter spell. But really, now we have so much power in the air. Like they would have to do so much, so many things. I guess they would have to reverse rebuke. They don't reverse reverse rebuke with a counter spell would have been their best play. But they insist on bouncing our stuff. <laughs> How many times have they bounced Unish? That's crazy. We have a Lofty Denial, looks like we're going to use this rather than Memory memory Lapse. And Reliquary Tower is I, it's really, really bothering me because I hate having so many cards in hand. Don't get me wrong, I like to have so many cards in hand, but... I often... yes, let's counter this. Oftenly I find myself so lost with so many cards, like... I never make the right decision, the, the optimal decisions with so many cards in hand. I will pick good cards to play, but there's always something better in such a big hand. And I'm a little bit lazy, because maybe this Ormos wins us the game, or maybe this is a combo piece that I'm not paying attention to. I'm just... Just, yeah, going with the flow here. Opponent attacks us with a 5-5, and you know what? I'm going to trade this, because I don't want them to have this clone back to their hand. Reflections of Lijara, you know? Yeah. And these are the things. Maybe there's a line where I play Reflections of, of Lijara and just draw my entire deck, use a Passes Oracle, and win. But we're going to take the safe route, which is, which is play Unish one more time. How can I not play Unish? It reduces the cost of the Sphinxes. It gives me card advantage. What else am I supposed to do? Sublime Epiphany? Yes, please. Alright. Thank you. They keep giving us the lands for free with the spells that we are going to took we are going to take regardless. Ah, we cannot attack into the 6-6. Well. Next turn should be a good turn for us, especially if we are able to do a have a good Sublime Epiphany this turn. Because Sublime Epiphany plus Swan Song is actually pretty safe for us. This game has been so slow, but it's still fun. It's still fun. I don't feel like I'm playing a boring game because we have so many decisions to make. Wandering Emperor. Well, if you give me the opening to do this before combat, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to bite on this bait and do what Sublime Epiphany does. Bounce your creature. Copy, I guess I copy the Pretender, just because it will draw us cards with Unish. Bounce your creature and draw a card. Key to the Archive, all right. Woohoo! Wow. I'm so happy I'm playing this deck. And opponent again gives us well this time they separate correctly because i'm so happy to pick up a wash away to never i'm never too too worried of having wash away in hand another all-star and opponent clearly this looks like a really fun build from the opponent oh now we can separate this into into two piles correctly Look, mom, I'm doing it. Give you the air cult elemental and I guess the land, and you can pick any of those. What was I saying? 
Oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Opponent's deck looks great. Like a clone deck. <laughs> Opponent scoops it up. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I look for that list. This is the end of the video. Please, please, please subscribe and leave a comment if you like. And leave a like if you comment. Give me the sub, 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 give me the sub.